Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be talking about object level security versus record level security. This is something that, that can be really hard to grasp within Salesforce, but is, is really important to understand how um, security works and how you can open up access or restrict access using the Salesforce features that they have for security. Now, Salesforce is great and security is extremely customizable to your company's needs. So let's actually go ahead and jump into it. Personally, I hate thinking about object level security in a versus sense to record level security because they're not like butting heads with each other. They're not in a fight. <laughs> they really work together in harmony to create a security experience for the company and the users based upon their needs. So I like to think of security settings, object level and record level security in this type of example where it's like a library section at a college or school that you went to. So object level is going to be the sections of the library and record level is going to be the individual books in those sections in the library. Objects are gonna be things like sections in the library like natural history and calculus and World War II. So again, Salesforce objects are gonna be things like accounts, contacts, opportunities, leads, etc. And then records in this library uh, example, in natural history, you'd see books like amphibian creatures. In calculus, you'd see things like calculus to make your head hurt. In World War II section, you would see things like battles in France in World War II. So in Salesforce, we would see records like on the opportunity, you'd see maybe a generator sale or a software subscription. For leads, you would see individual leads, people that work at a specific company that you're gonna be contacting to see if they're interested in your product. For accounts, you'd see companies um, like Ursa Major Solar. So now let's go back to this library example. So let's pretend that to access the specific sections in the library that you would need to be enrolled in a class that is teaching that specific subject. So calculus, you'd have to be enrolled in calculus to be able to access the library section of calculus. To get access to the World War II section, you'd need to be enrolled in a history class that was covering World War II. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, I think of this kind of like the restricted section. You have to have like a certain age level or be enrolled in a certain class to have access to that restricted section. And that's a lot how object level security works. You, typically, you need to have a job function that needs access to that specific object. So now again, going back to the library section example, um, records are going to be the individual books within those sections. So let's pretend that to get access to amphibian creatures, well, you can go in the natural history section, you'd need to be studying something that was related to amphibian creatures or calculus, you need to be in some type of calculus that was reading that calculus to make your head hurt book. This is going to be things like individual leads. You'd need to either be the one that was working that lead or helping out working that lead or a sales manager helping that lead. Hopefully that kind of gives you a good overview of object level security and record level security and how they work together. Let's go over a brief overview of the different features that each of these different things have to help us open up security to it. Now, one thing about Salesforce security, you cannot restrict access beyond what has already been opened up. There are typically no features that are going to take away access to a specific thing. You can only open it up beyond what has already been set. So the four main features that we have for object level security are going to be org wide defaults, profiles, permission sets, and field level security. So it's going to start with a baseline of org wide security defaults. So opening up access to specific objects like accounts, contacts, leads. And if those are all open and open read write, then anyone in the org can come in and edit it and can mess up your data and can be a really big problem. Now, if these were private, then we could start building upon that with the other features to open it up to only the people that need that access. So org wide defaults are gonna be either private, they're gonna be public read, so people can come in and read them or public rewrite where people can come in and edit them. So now let's talk about profiles. Profiles are going to build upon org wide defaults and open up access to um, typically, they're used to open up access to a group. I like to think of this as a department within Salesforce. So the sales department, the service department, and the marketing department. I mean, you could have a sales department profile that opens up access to the sales objects, counts, leads, contacts, 
maybe not contacts, but accounts, leads, opportunities. And then for service, you're going to need cases and accounts and maybe contacts as well. And then for marketing, you're going to need to at least view campaigns, leads, contacts. Now, profiles are going to open up cred access. So create, read, edit, delete. And there's also going to be view all and modify all. So now be really careful when you are getting the view all and modify all permissions because that can really mess you up. Profiles just typically are going to be used to open it up to a group. It's kind of like, I feel like object level is kind of a shell and then you're going to fill it in with records later. Um, let's move on to permission sets. Permission sets are really structured similarly to profiles. So these are going to open up access to the objects and what you can do cred wise on those objects. Now, typically these are going to be used to open it up to a single person or a smaller group than the profile. So if we take the department example, um, let's say each department has a manager or a few managers. So the sales manager and the service managers and the marketing manager, they're going to need a little bit more access to each object than just everyone, maybe just the reps in the company. So they might need to view all of the records that are there, maybe not edit all of them, but at least view all of them. And they might need to be able to delete records there as well that you wouldn't necessarily give to every single person, but you give to the managers that pertains to their job function. You can also use this in one-off scenarios. So let's say we had a marketing person who was a product expert you might need for that one marketing person, the product expert, to hop on to um, an opportunity every once in a while to be able to help out and give their expertise. So you might give them read access to that object and then open up that record access later on with record level security. All right, and then finally, we have field level security. This is enables you to either view or edit specific fields that you have. The most common example is going to be like really sensitive, sensitive data that you only want for certain people to see, such as a like a VP might only be able to see uh, social security numbers. And now you can encrypt that field, uh, but again, it's a really sensitive piece of data. And if you're going to need to um, change that or edit it, then you really only want someone who's higher up to be able to have access. So that's going to be object level security. Now let's move on to record level security. So record level security are going to be the individual leads, accounts, opportunities that you have in your Salesforce org. Um, there's typically three main features that you're going to see when it pertains to record level security. And just like how object level security kind of goes in order of opening up access, this is somewhat similar. So there's going to be role hierarchy, there's going to be sharing roles, and there's going to be manual sharing. So role hierarchy mimics typically your company's org structure. So you've got your CEO, you've got your C-suite or maybe board members, you've got VPs underneath them, you've got directors, then you've got managers, and then you've got reps. So how the role hierarchy works and typically works this way on most standard objects, and then also you can enable it for custom objects. It is going to roll up access to records that are anyone underneath you. So let's say um, we've got three sales reps underneath one sales manager. These three sales reps, all of their leads and opportunities are gonna be accessible by their manager and their manager's manager and their manager's manager and going all the way up. But it's not gonna work laterally where sales rep one can't see um, sales rep two's records unless it's shared through other means. And this also works the higher up on the role hierarchy you go where director one can't see any of director two's records or any of the people underneath director two records, unless again, it is shared through other means. So that kind of brings us to sharing rules. So sharing rules help us share a group of records on a going forward basis, depending on a certain set of rhyme or reason. So there's typically two types of sharing rules and it's gonna be owner-based sharing rules and then criteria-based sharing rules. So owner-based sharing rules are if sales rep one owns a record, then share it with sales rep two. So one person owns it, and if this person owns it, then go ahead and share it with this person. That's going to be an owner-based sharing rule. And then there's going to be criteria-based sharing rules. So 
let's say that we have a sales coach that helps with large deals. So anytime we have an opportunity above $100,000, then we want to be able to share it with the sales coach so then they can come in, see what kinds of opportunities that they're working with and help out and coach where it is needed and where it's possible. So that's gonna be criteria-based sharing rules where I guess sharing rules are, there's gonna be a rhyme or a reason for it. Now that brings us to manual sharing, which there's not necessarily a rhyme or a reason, or it's gonna be like some random one-off scenario that it needs to be shared, like the product expert example. So now that the product expert can see where they can go into opportunities, now you need to share the actual record. So the product expert only needs to see one, maybe two records out of, you know, a hundred different records that they could possibly see. You would go ahead and share the record with manual sharing and it's just a button and then you choose which person you want to go ahead and share it with. That being said, that's kind of record level security basics and kind of where I'm going to end the video. So that's how, I guess, a big basic overview of object level security and record level security and how they work together in harmony to help open up access based upon job functions, job needs. Yeah, just be really careful when you are setting security features that it is what the company wants. If it's a smaller company, they might not be as stringent on security, but if it's a larger company, they probably are. And you're gonna need to do a lot of investigating of, is this really what you want to see? And how can we open up this access based upon your needs? But thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses down below in the description box or on salesforceupscale.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.